Welcome back. There's a live look outside from the Oregon coast. Our in at Spanish Head Resort Hotel camera in Lincoln City. Thanks for watching Afternoon Live. Last year's writers and actor strikes made headlines for months. But what do the settlements mean for the industry now? Joining us to share what changes we'll see, we welcome back TV writer and showrunner Michael Jammin. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. So we as the viewing public are all excited that the strikes are over and production is back, but from the writer's perspective, what was gained when the deals were made? Well, a lot of it is jurisdiction over AI, as well as uh, certain minimum requirements for staffing. So younger uh, emerging writers will have uh, more of an opportunity of maintaining a living in Hollywood. Okay, so in terms of AI, what do you see personally? Are there things that you're worried about? Do you think we're all too worried at this point? Oh, no, I'm... <laughs> I'm a, I'm AI. No, I, I'm worried, <laughs> we're all worried about it. <laughs> but we've been we've been at least there's some regulations. So then now we have to they have to agree to we have to agree to, to its use. So they can't just um, hire AI and, and have us rewrite AI. In other words, because if that were the case, then the computer would get sole credit. We would get scraps. So at least we're protected in that way. Okay. Are there anything that are there any things that you were disappointed that didn't come out of the deal, or things that maybe just didn't work out as well as you hoped that they would? Well, I was hoping to get a little more, I guess, on residuals for streaming, but uh, they 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 got they got a lot of gains. You know, you can always do more. So, I mean, it's a negotiation, so you're getting usually half of what you what you originally wanted. So, what that, was you know. that time like for you last year, being on strike? I know you were out on the picket lines on certain days. How did you get through it, just not being able to be in a writer's room? Yeah, I mean, it was a lot. It was a lot of picketing, and it was also a lot of working on my own my own projects on the side, which is, that, that's nice to have unemployment <laughs> time to do that. <laughs> Silver lining there. Do you think that there's a more of a sense of a camaraderie as you come out of something like that, at least for the short term, that you all kind of stuck together and got something done? Oh, for sure, especially with the actors. I mean, we'd all walk, you know, in circles for hours a day talking with each other. And all of this is because there was unity, because we were all sticking together, so... Absolutely. And I was thinking back to, was it 2007? There was a pretty significant yeah. strike at that time. What was different for you or what did it kind of remind you of that time? Well, that strike was over something called, which we didn't ever want to know back then. It was something called streaming. And so it was about the Writers Guild having jurisdiction over this thing called streaming. And a lot of us were like, what are you talking about? And of course, uh, it's important we went on strike so that we got protection over streaming, which wasn't really a thing then. Yeah, novel concept in 2007 yeah. <laughs> to even think about. So let's talk about just logistically in terms of scheduling as we come back with TV seasons and movie production. How is this going to impact things down the line now that things are back in production? It's going to be slow. I was just talking to my agent this morning. Holly was still trying to figure out uh, how to negotiate, how to, how to you know make these deals work with the actors and the writers because everyone has new contracts so they're kind of tweaking the business model and they're slowly picking up new shows it's ramping up slowly okay slowly but surely hopefully we'll get back on track what's it been like for you i'm just thinking about the last five years specifically pivoting during the pandemic that changed so many things and then having a really impactful as you mentioned writers and actors all go on strike is has the industry changed that much or are you just kind of getting back to business as usual as much as you can. It's so slow I'm on a Zoom call with you. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't I be working it's on something? Kind of weird, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you, I'll drop anything to be on this show. I love it. Oh, this good. Show. That's what you like yeah. to hear. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it's, it's just slow, but like the pandemic changed things a little as well. Like we were doing writer's rooms on Zoom, you know, on Zoom, so which was very unusual. Usually it's in person. Yeah, really bizarre. So let's talk about the side projects that you were able to accomplish. You have a new book that like just came out? Oh my God, I do. It's it's called The Paper Orchestra. There yeah, it thanks. is. There it is. Oh my God. <laughs> it's a And it's a collection of uh, true stories. So fans of David Sedaris, uh, that kind of thing, or yeah. Neil Simon, true stories like that. And this is something that you have been working on in some form for many years, but was yeah. that time in the strike, did it allow you to kind of really get it done? Oh yeah, to, to take it home because uh, yeah, this was a four and a half year project, and and um, that was the that was the silver lining is that I got to spend a little more time on this project and just writing full time, and then 
getting ready for the release. A lot of people are like, hey, there's nothing good on. I'm like, just hang on, hang on. There's an audio book. <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> what was that like writing a book versus being in a writer's room or a show owner and collaborating with people all around you? How did you mm -hmm. find it as an artist? You know, I think people are surprised to learn that as a TV writer, I don't write what I want to write. I write what people pay me to write or what I think I can sell. And so this was the first time in 28 years where I was writing no notes from the studios, just doing what I want to do. And it was very, at first it was scary because I was like, well, isn't someone going to tell me I'm doing it all wrong? <laughs> but, uh, but then it became very liberating. And I was like, it's just, I feel like it's my best work um, artistically, yeah. Well, we're so excited for you. I want to mention the book again, A Paper Orchestra, out now. Hey, thank you so much for joining us today. It was great chatting with you. What a pleasure. Thank you so much. And we'll have more about Michael on our website at katu.com. We'll be right back with more Afternoon Live right after this.